the moving truck outside decided to make an appearance in the video too. I'll be right back. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Conversations with Candace. I'm Candace, and we're going to be conversing today. Today, I'm answering all of your cruise questions. A few weeks back, I went on um, a cruise. I uh, documented it on my Instagram stories. I made a couple of videos on uh, YouTube about the excursion, as well as um, some of the food that I ate. And I got some questions from you guys, some people that I know, some people that I don't know. So I said, why not answer it in a video? And then I got sidetracked. And one of my friends on Instagram was like, hey, have you done an FAQ video yet? I'm doing it right now. I'm going to do it. I'm doing it right now. So I posed the question on Instagram. I said, I'm answering all of your cruise questions. Send them to me. Many of the questions are frequently asked questions. A lot of them were the same things asked in different ways. So I'm going to answer those for you right now. Even after this video, if you have more questions, feel free to um, leave a uh, comment at the bottom of this video or send me a message on Instagram at Conversations with Candace. Now let's get started. All right, so question one is, how did you book your cruise? I actually got asked this um, by three different people. And um, so this is uh, my fourth cruise, which answers question two, was this my first cruise? This is my fourth cruise. The first three times, I believe, uh, I actually booked my cruise through a company called um, Entertainment Cruises. And they book for all the cruise lines, not just the one that I went on. And the reason why I went with them is because some friends had cruised before and they booked through them. So I did too. They have some really good deals like $0 down or you just pay like... $30 down or something like that and then you pay the rest of the cruise over time which was great for me because um, I can't always put a whole lot of money down so the first few times I booked through entertainment uh, cruises but the problem with that is that you have to only uh, like communicate with them until your cruise is like completely paid off or if you're gonna get your money back you have to go through them and not your actual like cruise line so this last time I booked through uh, Carnival directly on their website. And um, the way they book is you pay $200 down um, and then you pay the rest over time. And you have about 60 days before you cruise to finish paying off everything. So we did that. Um, it was a really easy process. You can log in at any time, make payments of any um, amount and you can always track how much you have spent or how much you've paid and how much you have to go. And you can browse uh, the cruise site while you're still making payments, just so you know you can plan other things while you're still making those payments. Next, frequently asked question is, how much does it cost or how can I find out the cost? So. Carnival is very transparent about their port fees and their taxes and how much everything is going to cost. Um, when we booked this last time, I got a balcony room. Um, the time before, we had a suite. But when you go on the website, you can choose which port you want to leave from, um, the date of travel or the date frame of travel, um, and the duration of the cruise. Um, and you can choose where you want to go um, on your excursions or on your debarkation um, at the port. So you can put all those things in and then it will give you the price per person for an interior room and um, a room with a view, a balcony room, as well as a suite. And then there, there are also different types of like suites too, um, but... Each room has a cost breakdown on the website and then right below it in fine print, it'll say um, plus $71 per person for taxes and port fees. So this time we only did a four day cruise and we had a balcony room. It was considered off season because it wasn't during like a vacation time and it wasn't in the summer. So we pay, I think like $400 per person. 
um, which was actually a really good deal. We still got the balcony, um, which is a larger room than an interior room, but not as big as, as a uh, like suite room. Um, but you can still sit out on your balcony. You can still see the water from your room, open up the curtain, get a beautiful view, um, and have a little extra space and um, a couch on top of uh, the bed. Now, the suite that we had last year, which I concluded that I'm only going to go in suites from now on because I was so spoiled being on a newer ship and um, being in a suite showed me like, ain't no way you gonna downgrade ever again, sis. Like people say you can get an interior room because you're not gonna be in your room very long. I love my room. We were eating in there, chilling, watching TV. Um, but we were on the Carnival Dream this time, which is a little bit of an older ship. So it looks a little more worn and um, we were not as happy with the balcony room on the Dream as we were with the suite on the Vista. So definitely going for this suite. The suite is obviously going to be exponentially more expensive. But again, you can pay over time. You have way more space. You have two sinks in your bathroom. You have a Whirlpool tub um, with your shower. Um, you have a room divider, even if like if you have a bigger like suite. Um, I'm going to be getting a suite from now on. Um, that probably was about $1,000 per person, but that was also a seven-day cruise. Um, go on their website, like peruse through all the options that you want and the dates that you want, and you will get down to the very cent of what you're going to pay for that vacation. So the next question is, um, are food and alcohol included? How does it work price-wise with food and alcohol. So um, if you know anybody who has ever cruised, you know that there is food available free of charge because you've already prepaid for it 24 hours a day. You can literally eat something of substance 24 hours a day on the cruise ship. So they have um, like buffet food as well as dining room food where you can order from a limited uh, menu. And that stuff is included in the price that you've already paid. So you will not be coming out of pocket for food if you don't want to. And there's always something to eat of like a variety. Once things have like closed down, you can do like pizza or some room uh, service items. Some of those are free. Some of those um, require a little extra money. But for the most part, if you don't want to spend money on food this entire cruise, the entire cruise, and you want to be full and you want to be happy, you can absolutely do so. Now, there are other dining options that you can pay extra for when you're on the ship. And you will do that with your sail and sign card. There's a card that they give you that identifies who you are and your room. And then you put money on that card. So you don't ever use like cash on the ship. You only use that card. And you can go to the steakhouse, the seafood shack, um, which is where I went. I love a good seafood. I love boiled shrimp. So we did that. Um, and paid extra for that. There's a sushi place that I went to that I did show in my food video. Um, that's extra. I think there's like a pasta place, but I wasn't really interested in that. Um, and that is extra. There's a dessert place that's like separate from the dessert that you get with your meals um, that has like premium like cakes and pies and stuff. That's extra. There's a coffee shop that has um, like specialty coffees. That's extra. Um, there are, there is a candy store that we absolutely went to a few times cause I love candy and that's extra, but, um, it's not so expensive that it's going to break your bank. Um, I take between two and $400 with me on my cruise and that's to like buy, um, bottles of liquor in port if I want to, or go to the, um, seafood shack or to leave a tip for the people who work in the room. Um, I could have absolutely gone on my cruise and not spent a dime while I was there because the things were pre were prepaid. Um, so 
Yes, there is food available that you do not have to pay for. It is available 24 hours a day. Um, now, alcohol, alcohol on the ship, you can bring one bottle of wine or champagne per person um, on your um, vacation, and you can have that in your room, and that's fine. Other than that, you have to buy alcohol from the bar. Um, their mixed drinks, actually, this year were pretty strong and pretty delicious, I gotta say. You can do a um, pre-purchased drink package that includes soda uh, if you want or alcohol if you want, but all the adults in your stateroom have to purchase that package. And it's like two or three hundred dollars per person and you get, um, I feel like, I think it's eight mixed drinks from the bar every day. Um, it's unlimited, but I think it's really eight. Um, we didn't do that. We did buy a few drinks from the bar. The drinks were like six, seven, or eight dollars, like a normal bar. Um, but we didn't feel the need to do the drink package because we were not going to be on the cruise for very long. And I didn't want to prepay and then the drinks not be majorly like amazing. So alcohol is a separate um, expense. There are people who smuggle alcohol onto the ship. I can neither confirm nor deny um, that I have done that a time or two. I will just tell you that it is um, advised that you don't do that because they can go through your bags if they want to. But I may or may not have done that um, a time or two. So the next question is, what were the stops? Were they adult only or family friendly? So we were on a four day cruise. So we only had one stop. Uh, Cozumel, Mexico is kind of like the standard stop if you're going anywhere in the Gulf. Um, we came, we were leaving from Texas, so we did stop there. Um, our uh, excursion, which we prepaid for through the cruise website, was the uh, Passion Island um, all-inclusive um, excursion. And we went on a catamaran to get there and it was family friendly. There were kids there, there was a kids area there to play. We did uh, consider doing um, adult only, but we also thought because it was the week before Thanksgiving, many kids would still be in school, so it wouldn't be very many kids. There ended up being a decent number of kids, but not as many as summertime. Um, so the family friendly, um, all inclusive place was really good. They had food that was okay. They had an open bar. Um, those drinks were not very strong, but there was also a cash bar where you could buy other drinks there too. Um, the things that were included were the beach chairs, uh, the tables with the umbrella thing over them, and food, and there was an open bar. And then there were also things there that you could buy, like a massage or um, bottles of alcohol to take back with us. Uh, medication they sell like antibiotics and Viagra and stuff like that you can buy there with no prescription and don't need to see a doctor um, the beach was beautiful check out that video because I did make a video for that um, and I feel like it was worth the money I think we paid $79 for it and it was through the cruise line now you don't have to buy excursions through the cruise line of course, they want you to. They're going to tell you it's safer or whatever. But this was our first year actually booking through the cruise line. Before, we just um, got off the boat at the port and would go to the guys who hold up the signs that say the things that you can do. Last year was really fun because the three of us got a taxi ride like around town. We stopped to get food. We stopped to shop. We saw some really cool things. And it was... Um, hundred dollars for the whole day for the three of us so like 30 something dollars per piece I mean per person um, so it's a really good deal if you go through the locals and then you know that they're probably gonna keep more of their own money um, but carnival does recommend booking with them because if you are late back to the ship and you have not booked through carnival for your excursion you will get left they're not gonna wait for you but if your excursion is through carnival and you guys get back late the ship will wait for you so the next question is, the next observation really, um, was that uh, was it looked better than Royal Caribbean. 
or was it better than Royal Caribbean um, or comparing it in some way. And I can't speak to that because I've never traveled Royal Caribbean. I've heard that Carnival is less expensive. I heard that it's more family friendly. It's more fun for young people um, and it's more kid friendly, but I've never traveled Royal uh, Caribbean. I will say that until Carnival gets newer ships back to Galveston, I think the breeze is still here or the Vista is still here every now and then, but the dream is not a ship that I'm going to be going on ever again in my life. So until Carnival gets newer ships back in Galveston, I may be cruising with Royal uh, Caribbean. So if I do, I'll keep you posted, but I cannot speak to Royal Caribbean. Um, I've heard good things. I heard that they are kind of more geared towards like, um, like a mature crowd. Um, and sometimes I be feeling mature. So that might work for me, but I can't speak to whether or not Carnival is like comparable to them. So the next question I get all the time, just in the, all the years that I've been cruising and people who are afraid to cruise, people who are skeptical, can you feel the boat rocking? Um, the short answer is yes, you can feel the boat rocking. But there are times when you forget that you're even on a cruise ship because it doesn't rock in a way that you think it will. Um, now, if the seas are a little... Um, busy, you'll feel a little bit of a swaying. It's not even really a rock. It's kind of a sway, but you, but you can't really see it. You can't really feel it in a way that disrupts your day. Um, things are not sliding off the table and, and you're not falling down. Um, there were a couple of times this past cruise where I got up to walk and I said, Oh, like just a little, Oh, but I've never been seasick and I'm a person who gets on an airplane and like freaks out. Like I just, I can't stand the way it makes my body feel. Um, cruising is not like that. The ship is thousands of feet long. Um, it's a very wide ship. Um, there's so much on it and cruise ships are designed to not ever sink. I know that everybody has seen uh, Titanic. It's not like that. These ships are way bigger. The technology is better. Um, even if the cruise ship fills up with water, it's not going to sink. Next question is, what is there to do on a cruise ship? So much to do. Every day you will get an itinerary of all the things going on on the cruise ship. And you can download the app that tells you what there is to do from 7 a.m., probably 7 or 8 a.m. until midnight or even later. There's something to do on the ship. The ship has a nightclub that really is popping. Um, they have comedy clubs. There's a casino. Um, the Lido deck has a huge um, like screen that shows uh, a movie twice per night. You can lay out on the deck or swim in the swimming pool and watch the movie. Um, there are bars all over the ship. The, the atrium usually has like live shows. The theater has live shows. Um, you literally can just lay in your bed and have them bring you food and lay up and watch the water. There is something to do at all times. Last year we did a um, thriller dance class. Um, I think they also have like a salsa class. There's like trivia. There's game shows. There's something to do all the time. They know that you're stuck on this boat. They know that you were on the water. So they're going to want to give you every opportunity to have fun. The Lido deck be having twerking contests, y'all. It's just so hilarious to just see all these different things and sometimes you don't want to do anything or that's just how I am I enjoy spending time in my room or having coffee like they can bring that to your room you can have it on your balcony the moving truck outside decided to make an appearance in the video too I'll be right back like I said there is so much to do on a ship you can do everything or you can do nothing and you will still be entertained some of the larger ships have like a sports bar, there's a library I think on every ship. There's always something to do, you just need to find it. And going down that list and like planning your day, um, for me, I didn't choose too many things because I just wanted to like relax on my vacation. But there is something to do at every time of day and something to eat at every time of day. 
Next question is, does the cruise have internet? Does a cruise ship have internet? Um, for the most part, the newer ships, I think, have um, the best internet, but the internet packages that they have are the um, social plan where there's one like it's $5 a day. You can get on like Facebook or Instagram um, and things of that nature, Facebook Messenger, and then there's a value plan that is a little bit faster speed. You can also check your email, I think, or check your banking info. And then um, there's the third one, the third the third tier one, um, that is a faster internet. And you can check most, uh, most web pages, um, as well as some streaming pages, but not all of them. So you can purchase uh, internet to use on one of your mobile uh, devices, either a laptop, or an iPad or a phone. You can't use it on all three, but you can pre-purchase it for a little bit cheaper or just pay for it when you get on the ship. Um, what I'm finding now is that you can't purchase it day by day. You have to purchase for the full time that you're on the um, cruise. So what I did was I pre-purchased for the cheap plan. In the last two days, I prorated the more expensive plan. Um, so that's how I got away with not having to pay for the expensive plans for the full time. But I knew that I wanted to be on the internet just so I could, you know, like communicate with people um, back home. I do think it's worth it. I do think it could be cheaper. But then again, they're about making money. So that's what they're going to do. And the last question I have is um, on the video of the food that I made, which ones did I pay for and which ones were free? So the ones that say Sea Day Brunch, or dining room um, or Lido deck those were free guys the guys burgers are free the p the pizza place is free um, the dining room food is free sea day brunch um, for free so the only premium thing that I actually paid for was from seafood check and bonsai sushi I paid extra for the sushi and I think that was like eight dollars for two rolls um, so even the premium food is not that expensive. I've not been to the steakhouse, I would imagine. It's steak. It's probably very expensive. Um, another question that I've been asked is, um, how many captain's dinners are there? So if, on a four-day cruise, there's only going to be one. Um, on a five- or seven-day cruise, there's going to be two. Generally, your first captain's dinner is on your first full day at sea. So not the day that you get on the ship, but generally the second day when you're at sea for the entire day, that is going to be your captain's dinner. Um, after that, the day, the full sea day after your first excursion will be another uh, captain's dinner. And that's where when you go in the dining room, you have to actually dress nicely. Now, nicely varies from person to person, but men cannot wear tank tops. Um, men cannot wear shorts. It is, it's best if you do like a button down shirt and, you know, some nice pants, uh, and shoes. They don't care if you wear tennis shoes so much as if you're, you know, the rest of your clothes are nice. Um, for women, I've seen women do like a sundress and that's considered nice. Um, I did a little bit of a fancier dress and I'll be posting that video at a later time. Um, this year, but last year I did a denim shirt with a, um, a really cute skirt, but then I wore uh, my chucks because I didn't want to wear heels all the way across the ship to get to my dining room. And they let me in wearing chucks. And so that was fine. Um, so dressy, dressy varies from person to person, but you know, no t-shirts, no tank tops, uh, no shorts. Um, and that was really it. But for the most part, cruising is super fun because there's enter entertainment on the ship um, and then entertainment when you get off the ship. Um, like I said before, I probably will not be cruising unless a newer ship comes to our port in Galveston um, or um, they upgrade the older ships because Carnival Dream was not it for me. Now, I have friends who've been on the dream who were absolutely fine with it, but our room had torn couches, um, it had dirty curtains, 
the shower head thing came off the wall in the bathroom. I just was not happy with it. And for what we paid and for um, what we've seen on newer ships, this was not it. This was not a good vacation for that. I didn't like it and I will not be back on the Carnival Dream. The newest ships are the Vista, I believe the Horizon, the Panorama, um, and the Breeze is still relatively new. So those are the four ships that I would say go on if you want like a, the cleanest room and the best experience on your ship. Or if you get on an older ship, check online to see if it's been renovated. Them old ships ain't nothing to play with, okay? And I will not be doing that ever again. Thank you for joining me on this episode of Conversations with Candace. If you have more questions, feel free to send them my way. Until next time, y'all have a good day.